This is my Victron inverter. It's quite an old one. It's probably been running for well nine or ten years maybe. Can't quite remember. Anyway, this video is about the interface, the virtual switch interface, and I'm doing it for two reasons. One is so I remember in the future because so rarely do you come and use this stuff that when you use it you go how did I do this and of course the other one is for uh, general information so you have to take the front off the this particular inverter it's a three kilowatt uh, Phoenix which means it's a UPS so therefore it has a mains connection to it as well so I'm just going to take the front off so I must state the obvious there's the screws I've taken them out but it's those four screws. I've been reading a charge controller manual recently and they're absolutely... the manuals are rubbish. They sort of... as if they're written by a technician so therefore uh, they assume a level of knowledge that they shouldn't do. And they give you some information then leave you high and dry. It's absolutely pathetic. If you're going to write a manual, assume that the person who's reading the manual knows nothing. Anyway, that's that rant over and done with. Now, we have a socket somewhere. And do you know, it's that usual thing. I can't remember. There it is. It's an Ethernet socket, just here. I'm just going to zoom in on that. There it is. Of course, this is quite an early Victron, so no doubt they'll be different on other models. So I'll just uh, put the cable in there. And of course, it's absolutely crazy, but the little tab is at the back. Anyway, that that's the cable in but it's not connected the other end. So now let's look at the laptop. So here we are. This is XP by the way. So we've got VE Configure Tools. There's the help. There's the VE Configure. And it comes up with this little so it says please select COM port so, so this is the interface it's quite an old one because it's got a serial port there I think the more modern ones are just um, USB but I'm going to connect the USB into the port so that's connected right from what I remember, I've got a little note here on the computer. It says COM port 4. Connect cable and switch on device. So we'll put the... Uh, right, target found. Let's just zoom in a bit more target found reading current values right here we go hopefully we could see this properly so the mains is 239 volts and the output of this inverter I've set at 232 and the battery is 50.3 which is about right 50 Hertz okay now I'll just draw your attention to file port selection target etc and then down here get settings and send settings 
So once you have adjusted anything, you have to send the settings or else the settings on the inverter won't be changed. So let's just go through this. Hopefully you can see the cursor. Yeah, looks like it. 50 hertz, okay. No slaves. Except wide input frequency, yes. AC low disconnect, etc, etc. I've got it on UPS function. Okay, and on this one, there's a 16 amp uh, relay, because it's an early one. The later ones are 32. So, AC input current limit, 16 amps. Fair enough. Then we've moved on to the next tab, inverter. There you go. You can adjust that there. DC low shutdown, 44 volts. DC input low start, 46 volts. I haven't got power assist on. Right, next one. Charger. You can enable the charger there if you want. Okay. And then there's various criteria for when the charger comes on. And you can set here the different types of battery. So if you're on a forklift, it's flooded tubular plate, which is what it is. Absorption voltage 60 volts. You can float voltage 56. You can change all these and you can change the rate at which it um, charges. And there's some hours and the a repeat and all sorts of things. You've got to bear in mind that this inverter can work from your batteries with mains as a backup or, and I think it's used a lot of this way, from the mains, with the mains going straight through it and looking after your batteries and then your batteries are the backup. So it's set to look after your batteries if you're set to um, run off the mains most of the time. Now, the end one, virtual switch. Here, see this big panel here? That's a huge lot of info. Right, loads of reading. Let's see if I can scroll down a bit. It goes on forever with examples and stuff. I can't say that its clarity is amazing but that just seems always the case with these sort of documents. Now then, down here we've got all sorts of things. Invert this virtual switch usage. That would mean you want it to work it the other way round. Don't use the virtual switch. Use the virtual switch Use the VS to ignore the AC input. That's the one you want to use if you want it to run off the batteries with just the mains as a uninterruptible power supply function. So virtual switch is the switch that does the business. So we've got usage there. I'm just going to point to that up here. Got another set of tabs. VS on. Come on, laptop's acting up. There we go. Right, this tells me when I want to switch over to the mains. I've got when the load is higher than 2,399 2, watts for more than 5 seconds, or when the DC voltage is lower than 47, or when the... Uh, the DC voltage is higher than 63. That's one. So in other words, the inverter will switch off at 64 volts. So DC. So if we go at 63, we're going to switch over to the mains, then we don't get a power cut. For one second there, five seconds, we've got chargers so you can run it for a set time 
and then some alarms if you want. Okay, VS off, which means that it's going back onto the battery. Load, right here we go. When the load is lower than 600 watts. So for instance, we put a 2.8 kilowatt load on this inverter. It's going, I'm not having this. I'm going to switch over to the mains and now we've got it'll switch back when the load is less than 600 for 200 seconds I don't know why I've set it for 200 seconds maybe just because I wanted it if it's going to switch over switch over for a reasonable length of time so these other ones here I've not activated and I don't know why that's set at 47 I haven't got a clue but you'd want it to switch back over when the DC voltage is probably, because we're on a 48 volt battery bank, when the DC voltage is more than 50 or something like that. Now, when it here, when it goes minus one, that's a default setting that means nothing's happening. It's the equivalent of putting zero. VS options, and there you've got a delay. So hopefully that will remind me as well as it will remind or inform other people. Coming back to inverter, it goes DC input low shutdown, 40 volts. That's quite low for a 48 volt battery bank. Yeah, but I'm going to leave it. Yeah, because it seems to work all right and the batteries are protected by the UPS function. So if the batteries go below uh, a certain voltage, 47, it will switch over to the mains anyway. So we can just safely ignore that, I think. But I haven't changed anything, so I don't need to send settings. But you could send settings and it just goes off to the inverter. But what I am going to do is save the settings now in my documents on this computer I've got a file that's Victron Inverter so let's just but set a different date on that DEC to 2015 save so that's saved to my computer and as I say because I haven't changed anything I don't need to send the settings to the uh, inverter but otherwise you just press that and it goes through and what happens is if you change a setting Let's just do this. If you change a setting, let's say change that to 42, you go OK, then it comes up in red. And then when you uh, send the settings, then if you look again, that red will have gone to black. So I'm just going to take that back to 40. Not 4,000. Okay, see it's black now. So I'm going to come out of there and out of there. Hopefully that will have made some sense and in the future it will remind me what's going on.